Yeah, we're we got Look, we got our camera there. Yeah, we're rolling. So which one I need to look at, go? Which one I need to look at? This is my camera. That's all me. Like me on me. So I'm already looking in this camera. Yeah, this is you. And I'm over here. Where you at? Yeah, I I'm alternating. Oh, you alternating? Yeah, I'm alternating. He alternating. I'm alternating. But this me. Yeah. You want to talk to the people? Hey, K. Hall. Hey, K. Hall, man. Pop, sorry, pop. Man, we got you the next time, man. Hey, but Pops took you, man. Took your spot, man. So here we go. Hey, y'all know what time it is. 94 Podcast. Stone Mount. <laughs> oh, you got to do it on both of them. You did? You did? You did. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the 94 Feet Podcast. I'm your host. Ooh, I got to take this toothpick out. Come on. This is how so I'm Hey, man, you need to be good. Be thought of winning. Um, you know what I'm saying? Inside. I'll put it back on in a minute. You know what I'm saying? Probably the real beat on my chest, might get a tag. What you expect? They know I'm a dog, I go at their neck. I go at their neck. The screen on a jack, I'm leaning them left. I'm mean with the left, but I'm snatching them right. About to take flight, yikes. 94 feet, you pull for a press, don't impress. Move like a vet, I got them upset, yeah. Stress, three so wet. Make a head coach, switch up the defense and set. That's better than stretch. Stay your feel, get your rest. Falling since a little one from a pee wee, I've been in league. Been a walking bucket, high school highlights all on TV from the Julie to a new league. You barely hooped in PE. Killer can of skin it like a team at Oop the VC. Oh, they in beast mode. They in beast mode. Walking cheat code. Walking cheat code. This shit easy. This shit easy. Like a free throw. Like a free throw. They talk real hoop. They talk real hoop. 94 feet though. They talk real hoop. They talk real hoop. 94 feet though. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the 94 Feet Podcast. I'm your host, Cam Tatum. Hey, it's your boy, Skinny the Pebble. And today, man, we got a great show, man. We got a great guest, man. Halo all the way from Stone Mountain, man. Playing at his ball at Wheeler High School, Miami University graduate, NBA former star, Duquan Jones, baby. Give it up for him. Yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. So, bro, we, we got to bring to the table. First question we ask everybody. <clears throat> Who's first person give you some work, man, on that court, man? I know you from the east side, so I know you've seen a lot. Yeah, and you know what's crazy? Moving on in the theme of east side, I'm going to say, you know what's crazy? Uh, Demetrius Bates. You remember D. Bates? Bates. He went to MLK. Um, okay. Shout out D. Bates. Shout out D. Bates, man. He's doing his music thing right now, but... um, Demetri D Bates, man. Man, D Bates was cold. Yeah, uh, absolutely, bro. Yeah. Um, you know that, that maroon and gold in me, dog. I just, it just make it hard, man. <laughs> but I gotta give bro his flowers, man. Man, nah, absolutely, bro. I mean, even like, and he was younger than me. I don't know if he was in your class. He was in my class. class. Yeah. So yeah, like he was yeah. playing varsity up. Mm-hmm. He was in like ninth grade. He had an older brother, um, Darius. Yeah. That that played too. So he was he was good as well. So, um, and. But we knew the little brother was going to be good. So, yep. yeah, that, that's, that's a name, man. D-Bates, so, man. We, we would play them uh, when I was at Stone Mountain. We would play them in the in the summer league because we were different classifications. Yeah. And y'all had uh, dropped down by then. Yeah. yeah. But we would play them in the in the summer league just kind of trying to get ready for the season. And, bro, we playing. He dunking. He coming down the lane. He was just versatile, bro. Yeah, he had yeah, all everything. that. And um, <clears throat> he was the first player that I, I kind of looked and was like, if I'm gonna play varsity, if I'm gonna play at this level, like I gotta step, I gotta step my step game up. up. Yeah. So on, on top of that, what are some of the guys that you looked up to as a young guy? And you said, you know what? Seeing somebody in high school from Georgia, I want to play basketball. Who was that guy for you? Uh, Lou, of course. I mean, our, you know, what I'm saying our generation or our classification. It was uh Lou. Um, we, it was a lot of great basketball players, man. Uh, we name them all the time. Lou, Mike. Uh, Chris Allen, uh, Chris Allen. Uh, Paul Delaney, I'm Steve trying to see if he's gonna say a name. I just want to see if he's nah, gonna say a name. Nah, you know, you oh, know, uh, Jamario, Jamario Davis, Stone Mountain, um, Stone Mountain, hey, Stone Mountain. Uh, Dog, you followed his footsteps damn yeah. near perfectly, that's didn't you? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, man. Uh, what yeah. was it? How to vegan? How to vegan? How to vegan? ATL on the show, man. If we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. That's Stone Mountain. You know that's. See, Cam, I got a little red and black in me, dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. some pirate in me, man. Yeah. Right. Um, even, uh, you know, Ray George. Ray George. Ray George. Um, Ray George is another one. It's so many, man. Uh, Big Fave, mm-hmm. Derek Favors. He was he was young uh, when when we were coming up. He was like a cl- two classes or maybe a class before us. But um, he played ahead of but his he time. But he played, oh, yeah. yeah. I played when Derek, when I was a senior, I was oh, classifying, man. and I played uh, with the Celtics when Derek was a, was a ninth grader. And I remember looking up to Derek as like, 
you our go to big man. Mm-hmm. And I'm about and I'm a senior, so yeah. absolutely he carried himself like that. Yeah, he carried himself. Why just made him famous though? Uh, bro, we ain't listen, bro. This, <laughs> we, 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 not, we not, we not dogging our Georgia boys. Like, hey, dog, shout out to Hey, fight. Hey, D Fade, we need you on the show too, my boy. Shout out to you. Hey, cut that though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, God, That's messed dog. up, bro. Hey, bro. But uh, Twitter was going crazy. It was. He did. He baptized him. He definitely did. It. So now, as you uh, so first before we get into um, uh, you know, after you break out, like, what what was your uh, motivation? Who put the ball in your hands? Uh, my pops, man, my pops. I remember that my earliest memories, man, was um, watching. I used to watch Power Rangers. That was my thing. And I remember my dad. Mighty Morphin. The Mighty, Mighty Morphin. Morphin. What was the one with what the Ranger? Were you? Oh, I, I was the black one. I, yeah, yeah, that that. Uh, the green and the white Ranger. The green and the white Ranger. No, tell me. The Green Ranger was it. Was the Green Ranger, Ranger was. I was the black one. Yeah, black I, was, one. I, was, I, was I couldn't break dance, so I was. Telling <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was a black ranger, but nah, I remember my pops coming in, man, and him taking the tape out. I was like, nah, we about to watch, we about to watch Jordan. So I remember Come Fly With Me was like on a constant. What did I just talked about this? A constant yes. loop, bro. It was on a constant loop at, at, at my house growing up, so. Shout out Elo, good, the Bulls win. Yeah. Hey, man, the Come Fly With Me, bro, that was it, man. Hey, man, they use some programming on y'all. Hey, I just man, see what it is. Y'all been programmed, dog. Indoctrination. Yeah, dog, yeah. that's indoctrination. Y'all can't help but to make Jordan to go. Y'all got all this propaganda that's telling y'all this, man. No, nah, we was just exposed to greatness early. Oh, that's man. all it was. Next question. So your pops, put, next, on, yeah, yeah, so please, your pops put on goat tapes for you. Yeah, okay. yeah right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so you put on goat tapes for you, and that's what it was. It was just like, you know, watching the battles, obviously, you know, he's battling against Penny and Reggie and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. Jordan just showed that, was like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm pure dominant. Yeah. And that's what that's what that's that was the goal that you really wanted to go for. Yeah, but not only that, I remember um, my pops. We drove up because I was born in Alabama. <laughs> what part? Livingston. I'm from Montgomery. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, I was born. I was born in Alabama. Y'all gonna, y'all gonna be kids, right? Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pop. Yeah, we might. We might yeah, be kids. Might be kids kid for real. I'm like, look, for real, man. Hey, my um, granddaddy, boy, I'm telling you, he, he shoot him up now. I, oh my God. <laughs> oh, I'm saying we still finding brothers and sisters. <laughs> nah, but um, I remember my pops taking me to um, to Jordan in '96, his last game against the Hawks, and we were in the nosebleeds. But I remember looking down, and again, being like, you know, aware to the extent of like, I'm looking at Jordan, and I'm like, nah, it's it's literally an air a, a aura around him, mm-hmm. and to be young and to be able to decipher that and kind of conceptualize that even to my dad I'm like dad, he don't look like, no. like one of us yeah. Yeah. yeah and I remember my dad looking at me like he not God damn. you know so I seen it firsthand man mm-hmm. um so yeah. fast forward a little bit does LeBron have that same or man you've been on the court with LeBron and you was in Miami when LeBron was in Miami nah it's it's, it's different I mean again they they both great in their own right man yeah. but LeBron different cause you had a LeBron tape growing up I get it. Uh, nah, if 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 we get into the debate early, you know, Jordan, during Jordan era, wasn't nobody taking turns, man. It wasn't no who going to win it this, this year. You're right. It was. Let me tell was, you why. They were gone. He said he was battling against Reggie Miller. It wasn't no battle. Reggie Miller never go down as one of the greatest of all time. To, as of today, Kevin Durant is the best player in the world. Is that is that is that Jordan's fault that – the people that was trying to compete against him just wasn't better than him. Hey, I'm just saying, if you the goat, like I always tell people, if you he the goat, the goat. Larry he Bird the is. shepherd. Wow. Larry Bird the goat herder. I mean, but he never. Larry, okay, he he beat him in the playoffs, but he never, you know, but would enjoy. Like I said, my, you can't, my, you can't my, win my one game. You the goat. You can't win your team to one victory. You the goat. And, and you got this other guy who's considered the goat, and he's been to ten finals, and you can't be five hundred in the finals. Kevin Durant went and joined a seventy three and nine team. The best player in the world went and joined the best about, shooter in the world, the other best Kevin shooter in the world, and you, my man, got two losses against KD and Steph and Draymond Green and Klay Thompson and David Wade. Draymond Green in that. He defensive player of the year. Rudy Gobert is too, and what's his name was uh, Giannis. Yeah, I'm just saying, but how about how, but you, but how you gonna how you gonna say Rudy Gobert? These guys defensive player of the year from top to bottom. Golden State was accoladed. But okay, but, all right, I'm listening. No, no, no. I was yeah, about to say Jordan yeah. is one at every level, man. 
national championship. Jordan was never a part of a re- uh, redemption team. Hey, I mean, you're right, but. Hey, 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 James Worthy was the guy. But who hit the shot? He was Steve Kerr on North Carolina. He was Steve Kerr. He was Joe Paxson. He was Steve. Oh, wow. I mean, Listen, but Michael Jordan, they didn't even take Michael Jordan number one. Michael Jordan had those expectations coming out. I tell you, but I tell you what. Okay. I, I like to rephrase my answer. Okay. I don't think I prefer if I had to if I had to choose, I would choose Jordan over LeBron. Yes. I mean, it's fair. But I think most importantly, though, mm-hmm. the whole GOAT argument has mm-hmm. lost its validity because it's used so often. Yeah, everybody. You know what I'm saying? So I, I feel like it's a, it's almost like a straw man argument, if you will, because we can paint the narrative to to fit the point that we're trying to make or the player that we're trying to push. That's real. So, you know, I, I feel like a, a more concise argument is like, which one do you prefer over Oh, yeah. Send us the ESPN. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, the, hey. that's the best answer I heard. Fuck. Yeah. But I'll just tell you, Jordan, right? for me, like, it's, it's on record. Me and Cam talk about, I love the Jordan LeBron debate. Mm-hmm. But Kareem to me is the goal. I tell people, if you can score, if you can score 35, almost 40,000 points, and you got one foot on the ground, and you moving around trying to shake a dude on one foot, no crossover, mm-hmm. I got to spin and turn in circles. And shake you, and you. I'm seven one, and you seven one, and I can still average twenty points a game for nineteen straight years. Kareem to go. But this, but this, but this proves my point though. Yeah. If we talking, we talking goat talk, mm-hmm. and these names ain't even mentioned. Mm-hmm. You talking about? I mean, you got the Wilts. Yep. You got. Uh, you got Bill Russell. You my got. Man. You know these names ain't even mentioned. So. That's what I mean by the 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 the, the theme and the whole notion yeah, of yeah. the greatest of all time. It's like it's it's thrown around so much, and we're in the era where you only as good as your last game. Yeah. All right. You know. So transitioning back to you, we uh. So now you know you're taking on to this liking of Jordan. So obviously you're going to yards, you're imitating, yeah. you're going to you know courts and stuff like that. You're trying to be like Jordan. You're trying to now you're seeing the other players like you said that you look up to. Um, who did you start playing AAU with? Like, what was your first team? My first team, uh... Eastside players? Nah, and see, I was about to throw a shot at you. I was about to be like, I wasn't good enough to play with the Eastside players like, like, uh, like him and Marshawn. I think my first AAU team, man, the first team I ever played on was, uh, at Victory Baptist Church. Mm. Right here off uh, hey, off Central, sure. off North, yeah, yeah, off Central. Yeah, I was doing some training over there. Yeah, um, sure, yeah. but um, my first AU team was the Georgia Hurricanes. It was the Georgia Hurricanes. Marshawn, Marshawn was on, was on that Marshawn team. Was on the that was that they had just formed that team because they had just branched off from the the, the stars. Stars, yeah. It was uh, Marshawn, Smith. Yep. Nate Smith. Uh, I think Tony it was Jody. Smith. Yep, Tony Smith. Tony Smith. Uh, and then Jody, Jody was, was Jody was on that team. Um, Tracy, Tracy, Tracy Thomas, Tracy Smith, Tracy Smith, not Tracy yeah, Smith. Tracy Smith was um, in North Carolina, went to Mount Zion. Yep, it went to NC State. Went to um, NC State. Yep. Remember him? Who else was on that team, bro? Um, yeah, but the Georgia Hurricanes. It was somebody else. Was was um, for a quick second? Was a guy named Amara Thompson? He. He played with me at Tucker, yeah, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Left Amara, Amara was there. Yeah, played yeah, yeah. South, played yeah. Uh, Central Florida. Yeah, yeah. Amara was with us, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, yeah. Tyler Tucker? I yeah. Remember, I remember him. Yeah. yeah. He put this in here and in Central Amara. Florida. Yeah. Amara was good. You know what I'm saying? Left-handed. He, six, my, three, about six, six, four. Six, three, six, four. He, he was dead. Play. Yeah, he could hoop. Fiery. He just, yeah. you know, we didn't have the right development. I'm just saying, because I I mean, I know, but I'm seeing him go right. I'm seeing him. He would have been an even better piece if he just had better... Yeah, I mean, we are already school, know. But, like, he was, Amara was good. And he, he, was he came to graduate show, yeah? I think Amara came out the year after me. He came out 07. He was with that championship group. Dang, I don't it's remember him. So, so it was the Georgia Hurricanes, and then, so now, and you're, this is while you're at Stone Mountain. Mm-hmm. So, man, I got to ask, dog, because right. the name we just brought up. Uh, Marshawn obviously transfers to Tucker mm-hmm. from, from my school, I mean, from Stone Mountain. 
Um, you got Drew Goodlock that's at Stone Mountain. You have yourself that is at Stone Mountain. You have Terrell Bell who is at Stone Mountain who went to Virginia Tech. Mm-hmm. Like, how? <clears throat> it, and, and, and it seems obviously because we're gonna say it now, you you end up transferring to Wheeler. Mm-hmm. But how does like how does that all all work out? All those names that I just named because um, y'all all play the same position. Yeah, we all play the same position, but it's like a Stone testament Mountain, to what you what y'all was talking about, man. It was just it's like a Stone developmental Mountain. type thing. Stone Mountain, dog. and <laughs> I mean, yeah, I can say that. Like, I got do y'all just not hear the names I just said? Yeah, but it, but it's team? but it's it's Stone Mountain. Like, mm-hmm. and you, I mean, you probably don't understand that unless you just it's Stone Mountain. Right. Like, you can, Stone Mountain is just one of them places you can have everything right, and it's still not gonna be right. Right, it's Stone Mountain. And I think, you know, and, I, you know, at the time we had Coach Brown, I honestly think it was no – he wasn't malicious and nothing like that. He was just doing the best he could. But when you have, like you said, that much talent, it's more so uh, managing and mitigating personalities. You don't know what to do with it. Because you ain't never had it. You don't expect yeah. to get it. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was one know of those to do with it. Carter know what to do with it. Yeah, it was one of those type things. But so – you know, I, so so did you did you play much at Stone Mountain? Yeah, I played like my freshman year. Um, I played all three. I played ninth grade, JV, and varsity. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my tenth grade year is when I had my my breakout year, mm-hmm. and I started getting recruited. Even at you know in tenth grade, they would come looking at Drew and and um, and Terrell. And they would leave with me on their recruiting list. Cause so you're super athletic. Yeah, but the thing was, my the focus for development wasn't on me. Mm-hmm. It was like, okay, you athletic, so we gonna use you just for and I, it was the, it was on the team. So he it, it put you in the position to where you was just useful, throw you a backdoor oop or something like that, but uh, never put you in the position to really develop yourself as exactly, a player. Exactly. It was hey, you know. Go get rebounds, yep. dunk if you if you open, but get the ball here, get the ball there. Mm-hmm. You're you know. about to be a role player at Stone Mountain. Yeah, you know. and and I think, uh, man, I can't remember the school, man. It was a um, it was like a mid major school. He came to visit. Uh, he came to look at. I think it was Drew. It was it, Drew or Terrell. Um, we had a lot of talent. Even Ray Brown. And he he pulled me to the side and he's like, uh, you know, young fella, you need to you need to work on your game. He's like, you know, I like you, but you got to work on the intangibles. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, I'm confused. What the heck is intangible? And he was just like, you need to get in the opportunities where you can work on intangibles. Mm-hmm. I think that was kind of like the the that was lighting the fire. Yeah, nine. that was kind of like okay. You know, I want to dribble the ball sometimes. Yeah. I want to do this. I want to yeah. do that. Yeah. So so now it's like, okay, you have your breakout year, but you don't stay there. No. You, get, you, you transfer to Wheeler. And I know, like, myself and some of the other guys from the East, I'm like, man, why you going to – what was what, what was that about? But we, we, we got it. But it's like, boy, you went from all the way out there. Yeah, man, you know. And I know uh, we talked about a little bit behind the scenes, a little, little bit about the story or about, you know what I'm saying, what, what influenced that decision as far as like, but it was some other, was some other reasons as to why that? Nah, you know, what happened was I had, um, it was, uh, you remember the, the tournament they used to have at Southern Poly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the, the, the 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 rival showcase. The rival. You showcase. was there. Yes, I was. Yes. Me, Chris Allen was there. This is like my yeah. senior. Yeah, they had this. The, uh, Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I do. Yeah, sure. So That's the rival cool. showcase. Um, I I'm on the team with JJ. JJ Hicks. Bro, I remember this tournament. You remember this tournament? I remember this tournament. And Holly. for whatever reason, bro, had Justin an out Young of body. Put it on. Justin Young. Justin yep. Young put it on. Had an out of body experience. Play crazy, big right up, whatever. Yep, I remember now. And and and, and, and Black Boy JJ, we call him Black Boy. Mm-hmm. He walked over to me. After the tournament over, he's like, oh, yeah, you did your thing, bro. He like, where you going to school at? I'm like, oh, I'm at Stone Mountain. He kind of like. Stone Mountain? Yeah, he kind of was like, yeah, you need to come to Wheeler, bro. Like, come play with us. Mm-hmm. I was like, ah, you know, whatever. Now nah, I'm cool where I'm at. 
And I went back to Stone Mountain and again, I had that other epiphany where we started like summer workouts. You back in that box. Yeah, I'm back in the box after having this this breakout, you know, whatever. And because that wasn't with your team, that was just like some invite, like yeah. individual player stuff. Yeah. So when you had that out of body experience, when you had that that breakout, that was like, nah, now I they ain't focus on the quan and the team. They focus on just the quan. You exactly. realize how good you now. Are. I'm yeah. like, now you finally see how good now, you are. Hey man, listen. Yeah. Yeah. So now you're starting to have some confidence. So mm-hmm. you have the conversation with JJ. You go back to the workouts, and so you know. Like I said, I I grew up on you know where I yeah. I grew up on Central and North Harrison, man. And at the time, I think this was during uh, a short time after like Hurricane Katrina, so all of the the uh, all of the yeah. people from everywhere kind of yeah, influx and dry. Flip, they all came to Memorial. So crime, you know, everything. Listen, they closed the Wendy's on Memorial Drive, dog. How you close a Wendy's? Yeah, the four for four. <laughs> yeah, because we got to split of those. We got to split of them. If they didn't go to Stone Mountain, they went to Tucker. Tucker. Yeah, we got a lot of. Them, so so um, one day, I literally was coming, come home from practice, walking up to the apartment. The dough kicked in. Mm. Dough kicked in. Everything that ran through, ransacked. They took everything, and it was it was strange too because they stole like all my jeans. Yeah, it was, it was, that's the one thing I'll never forget. Like, they stole oh, every pair of jeans I ever had. And so, my mama come, I'm calling my mama, the police, whatever. And my mama comes, and she like, you know, we had already been, because I was getting in trouble, fighting, whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, she came to me, because she asked me. I was like, nah, like, I grew up here. Like, I'm so Stone Mountain, bro. I went to Stone Mill Elementary. You know what I'm saying? I was never... For those who don't know, for those who do know, you know. Right. I was never a car rider. I was never a bus driver. I walked every from middle school to, ele- to from elementary school to high school. I was a walker. They don't know about that. I mean, I know yeah. that walk coming from Stone Mountain Middle School, walking up to North Hash to the bus stop right. on the corner Memorial driving that. So right. you was walking to Stone Mountain. Right. So, you know, she, she asked me, but... After this happened, she walked in and she was like, "You going? To, you going to another school? You going to Will?" And I, I let, I fought her on it for like a week, mm-hmm. and you know, that was the decision that changed my life, man. Mm. So, so now, so this, this is your junior year. This is my going into my junior. Going year. into your junior year, so now you transfer to Will. Who, who was, who was your teammates at Will? Man, we had a stacked team. We had uh, per usual. Her we had uh, Trey Lane uh-huh. went to UMass. Yeah. Uh, Adrian Brown mm-hmm. uh, he went to Brown University, Ivy League. We had uh, Lil Phil. He was a freshman. Phil Taylor. We had JJ Hickson, of course. And then was Richard Howell there too? Nah, Rich came my junior, my senior year. Okay. But uh, yeah. So y'all had a stacked team. So yep. now and now you're the man now. Now you 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 well one of the men. You're the focal point at least you know because JJ is there too. Right. And you, but you're one of the focal points is the, is that wing guy. Wing mm-hmm. And I think I remember. Uh, I, I know he if he ever watches this he probably, he might not be happy about me bringing this up. But I wish we got to get this TV screen too up so we could have the cameras flash on there. Did you dunk on John Wall? Oh uh, yeah, when he was at Wheeler. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, see. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Cause now I want you look, to look, be. Look, they'll be able to edit that in. Yeah, though. I want you to be able to see. So, so now you could have been like, oh, god, god on, dang. That your junior year? That, that was, uh, nah, I think that was my senior year. That was your senior year. Yeah, okay, senior so that was year. before. So y'all, were y'all playing on a national schedule your junior year? Yeah, we was playing on a national schedule uh, junior and senior year because we played, uh, I remember we went to Vegas, we played Finley Prep. Okay. Um, so Finley Prep been around for a while. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I thought Finley. they were pretty relatively new. I didn't nah, know they were around for nah, a while. Nah, nah, they've been, they been producing for, for years. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> this ain't it right here. That's exactly it. Send it hey, to the group chat. Yeah, to the group yeah, chat. Yeah. So now Who that man like that. <laughs> he was in the way. Yeah. <laughs> so y'all playing in the national schedule. What when you got to Wheeler? At what point did it really start to turn? Like the recruiting, like the tournaments. Um. You want to repeat it? Yeah, yeah. Let me yeah, repeat the question. Hey, I'm just saying, he just went and just going, you just don't lay on nobody like that in mid <laughs> now, now you're, you're, you're at Wheeler, <laughs> and so now do you notice the difference? Do you notice the difference in preparation, how they, they're training you, how they're getting you ready for, obviously, what you're you know, about to embark on because now you're, you're creating this name? Yeah, man. Wheeler was, was gladiator school, man. We was we – was, we were – Give us an insight on I Wheeler was just about because to ask that too. everybody yeah. goes to Wheeler, or you know what I'm saying. But I haven't really had a, a chance to talk to anybody about what is so impressive about Wheeler when you get there, and what makes y'all just because think, y'all there just, don't make y'all gonna be able to win. So what makes it happen that y'all are able to put it together and still win? Like what is it? Is, is, is it the coaching? Is it the? Is, is it not just the head coach? Does he have a staff around him? People that mm-hmm. like probably it's the culture. It's the you said what culture? It's the it's, culture. It's the, culture. The, it's, it's the culture, bro. It's it's literally gladiator school, yeah. and it's like it's not for. It, it's it's like you see like Karate Kid, mm-hmm. like wax on, wax off. That's like the the culture of it. Will. It's a process. It's 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 you constantly tested. You're constantly pushed beyond. Uh, you know your your what you perceive is your capabilities, but it it's simple, bro. It's literally it's just work. Mm-hmm. Every it ain't no magic uh, pill. It ain't no like me and JJ. We was walking to the gym at five thirty a.m. Mm-hmm. Like literally, like G call us like yo, we outside. Like where you at? And G like you know what? Y'all walk to the gym. Walk. It ain't the sun ain't even up yet. Yeah. And again, but you're also in a better environment too, to where you can walk and be cool and not, you know, you well, out well, there. Well, what's the storm on my east side credit? By five o'clock in the morning, everybody sleep by the end. Right, they right, came right, from right. the club right. and you love Waffle House. There ain't too many that F I thirty right. period anyway. But. but the thing about it is that's that's just a different degree of the same thing. It's a, it's it's still opposition like in Stone Mountain you got you got to dodge the maze of other things outside of basketball but it's like in this environment now you got to see and dig in yourself like how bad do you want it? Mm. because at in 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 Stone Mountain if somebody would have told us that Man, I'm going back to sleep bro. I'm not yeah so that's what I mean it's 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 opposition. It's different degrees of the same thing. Well, now it's you versus you now versus you can blame it on the environment. Yeah, it is. You can't yeah, blame it, it on the environment. Well, now it's 100% you. Now it's 100%. Are you, you. going to sink or swim? That's it. That's and it. And then you got all the great players around you too, so. So did that make that hard, having those great players? Did that make it hard for y'all to really get y'all shine? Like, you know, a lot of you see with a lot of for uh, state player, uh, player of the years, or mm. first teams and stuff like that, or maybe players who are just the lone star and take their team certain ways. But you guys have obviously four or five players. Did that make it hard for you guys to get those personal accolades? Nah, it wasn't. It wasn't hard. But the thing is, bro, we never focused on it. Mm. Our we never really focused on the personal accolades. Our focus, and it wasn't. It was never because we were tested so much, and we was took through the fire so much together that we was together. It wasn't mm-hmm. like you know on some teams, and you've been a part of it professionally, or whatever. Where it's like, all right, I got to get mine, so it's me against you against them. Yeah, it was literally like we was just dogs, bro. We yeah. was pit bulls, and it was literally you know y'all depending on. The- Y'all against the world. Yeah, and, and and we were so together in a sense of, like, we would play, uh, who was it? We would play Kev. No, not not Kev. Lassiter, right? Mm-hmm. Lassiter at the time, they had a, a point guard that was supposed to be whatever. He's supposed to be good. Mm-hmm. We, before the game, me and JJ is both in field ear, like, hey, you got to eat, bro. Mm-hmm. You know what it is. 
Mm-hmm. So it it wasn't, you know what I'm saying, it wasn't like the jealousy and nothing like well, that. You had to worry that. about yourself because, one, you at Wheeler, too. Wheeler already got a traditional winning. Right. Your coach is one of the best coaches in the, in the state of Georgia right. already. Right, So they already know if you at Wheeler and you starting at Wheeler, we know he already three, four, five steps ahead of the next best basketball player anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, Wheeler putting five guys in college every year. Right. So long as Wheeler winning, mm-hmm. speaking of that, we'll come back to it. Coach just retired, what, two years ago? Who that, Coach Lip? Yeah. Lip? Uh, Did he retire? Maybe, I think two. About four, four. Yeah, you it was, it was yeah, yeah. either way. Yeah. 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 You think Willa is still that place now? They just won a championship. Yeah. They just yeah. won a championship this year, I think. They won this year? Think was it this year they won? This, either this year or last yeah, year. Yeah, they won it. They won JB. They won and JB. And they was in the running for the year before. They still yeah. been in the running. They yeah. still they still considered Willa. They still putting out. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. you know, because yeah. sometimes didn't, when didn't you. Didn't Lil Roscoe go there? Yeah, Lil Roscoe. And that with the yeah. Denver. Yeah. So, I mean, they still putting out but players. But, you know, sometimes still, when you lose your coach, absolutely. you know. No, 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 absolutely. Yeah. No, I get what you're saying. I'm, yeah. I'm just answering. Like, nah, yeah. they still. No, no, no. They still. They, they still. They still. Yeah. They still yeah. that. So, and I think another advantage that we can get into that y'all had at Will is that y'all guys play on the same AAU team. Mm-hmm. You yeah. play. I know you, you said you played with the Hurricanes, but you also played with the Renegades. Yep. And the Renegades was where I, you know, really got to know. As far as from the highlight standpoint, is where I got to really know you from. As right. far you know what I'm saying, seeing you on the national scene because you know worldwide they was putting y'all out, they was putting y'all in in, in the right positions, mm-hmm. the right tournaments, and y'all had good players. Yeah. So um, like, who was on that? Was it everybody? But y'all, y'all had JJ. Um, I know Phil played, but y'all also had Chris Allen Bro, we had, on the team. We had, y'all had Cameron Hayward on that team. Right. Y'all had uh, I, God dang, DeAndre. Uh, Metal Creek went yeah. to went to went to Oregon. Yeah. yeah. So y'all 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 sure. had. Shoot, you talking about coexisting there, Willa? How you coexist on that? Age? Bruh, that, that's that's what I mean. Like for me, bro, I've you know I've been blessed my whole career, um, but I think my success is just a reflection of the people around me, bro. It wasn't it wasn't like 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 how you said it with, with being at Wheeler, you wanted to carry the tradition. Mm-hmm. You wanted to, you didn't want to stand out. You wanted to blend in and hold your own. You wanted to win. You wanted to win and you, you didn't step in the lane or, you know, our biggest thing on teams that talented was, well, my thing was, I right, if I get subbed in, the the intensity level can't drop off. Mm-hmm. So if you playing with those great players, and again, I'm younger, so I was just happy to be, you know, oh, around yeah. So when Chris Allen need a break or we had, man, so many great players. Casey Mitchell, Trevor Mbakwe, uh, um, Sherrod Minus. And you damn sure been not coming. And Villarica. You know what I'm saying? So that was like my whole mindset, man. The, the intensity level can't drop off. And as far as Wheeler, we known for winning. So if you the man... This you year, always in the fight. Yeah, you Didn't just Jay always. Jay Crowder go to Villarica. Yeah, Crowder out of Villarica. Yeah, Jay Jay Crowder in Villarica. Yeah, I didn't know Jay Crowder was from Georgia. Yeah. You said that. I'm like, yeah. it's crazy. I, I, I yeah, he always he, 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 he mm-hmm. out of had a Villarica, so he had to. I think he played with that dude because I think Jay Crowder's like 08, yeah, or 07 or something like that. But uh, so yeah, so now obviously, like I said, you playing with that stack team. Your guys got everybody in the gym. Coaches come to see you, so now you obviously you're gonna make a name for yourself. So now. The recruit process it heats up. Mm-hmm. Who are your? Can you name? Did you, were you able to narrow it down? Who are your top five? Who, where are you gonna go? Where are you supposed to go? Who we thought you was gonna go to? And yeah. your craziest recruiting story too, because yeah. we've had some crazy recruiting stories at this yes. table about coaches getting on their knees begging players to come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like man, we've had some crazy man, stories. Man, like, so, play, like, so hey, I need your up. crazy recruiting story, and also I need to know why not the home team? Why you ain't stay in Georgia either? So I need um, them stories too. All right. Uh, my top five I remember were Cincinnati, um, Florida State, Oregon, Me- uh, Memphis. Calipari was there. This was the, his you last. Home about to be together. Mm-hmm. Uh, Memphis and um, Miami, mm-hmm. and um, 
So Georgia and Tech weren't even on the list. You know, Georgia, UGA offered me when I was a freshman. Mm-hmm. I got a, I got an offer from UGA when I was a freshman. Mm-hmm. Um, but At Stone Mountain. At Stone Mountain, yeah. Right. Um, but after my after my freshman year, sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I I chose Miami because it was an opportunity for development. And it was also, from another uh, perspective, coming from Stone Mountain, going to Wheeler, it was a magnet school. So I fell in love with diversity. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Being exposed to different cultures, cultures and, 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 and different um, just groups of people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that would, that would be my advice for the younger uh, guys going through their recruitment now. Yeah. So consider <laughs> consider the 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 infrastructure after you after you leave because in college yeah you gonna meet and party and and meet different people but in that same regard you gonna meet the new CEO of of FedEx or you gonna meet a, the creator of the next tech. You know, oligarchy that your, just your blows net, your up. Network. You, you know what I'm saying, right? Right, in. right. So you build your network of people. You know, in that regard as well, not just from a, a, a sports perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I, looking back, I think it's a funny story. Here we go. I went. Here we go. Not a recruiting story. There we right? go. So I took an unofficial to Cincinnati when Mick Cronin was there. And uh, we was there, like, you know, it was unofficial, whatever. And one of his players, I think they were doing, like, a summer camp. And one of his players came up to him and was like, yo, coach, I, I got to, he was like, yo, I got to I gotta rush and go to the bank or go to the post office or whatever. And I'm listening because I'm just, you know, I'm paying attention to how they interact yeah, with each other. Yeah. And Mick Cronin looked at him and was like, he turns his back to everybody. He's like, get the F out of my face. And I'm just looking, and it was just, like, strange to me because you he seemed, like yeah, he, you don't talk to nobody like that, but also, like, the player, he seemed sincere. Mm-hmm. And the fact that he was like, yeah, get out of here, he was real dismissive. I'm like, I was kind of apprehensive. Mm-hmm. So I kind of scratched yeah. Cincinnati off my list. But, um... I mean, a Miami recruiting story. Ah, I remember. Um, it, it didn't it consist of Uncle Luke. No, 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 no. Nah, I uh, nah, it it's like just, my Miami recruiting. It was just. It, I mean, a lot of people think about is it's Miami. Is obviously what you think about from the. I guess hip hop scenes Correct. and videos and stuff like that, but like you said, people don't really understand. It. It's 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 a private school, yeah. So you yeah. really you, ain't nobody just getting into the University and, of Miami. And then it's so far south too. And then, like, exactly. Yeah, so you yeah. gotta really have something going for yourself, or really want to be one about about something in your life to first of all get accepted and get into Miami. Mm-hmm. So it ain't like that. You just go down there and you're just gonna be like, all right, now it's just. Uncle Luke, you know what I'm saying? You know, folks Fast confuse like, Miami with Miami Beach. Miami, right. Right. Exactly. Yeah, like, it, Miami, right. Miami is scary. Yeah, yeah. Miami Beach, it ain't a lot of us over there. I mean, you know a lot of, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But that's what he's talking yeah. about, the, the diversity. Yeah. So that's what, so, so you can say, you know, palm trees, beautiful weather, you know what I'm saying? The, the sunny, it's, it's, it's the, the diversity, all that was there. Mm-hmm. Um, did you go, did you take any other visits? Did you? Uh, I took I took a bunch of unofficials. Okay. Like, and I I took uh, I went to UGA. Mm-hmm. Um, I surprisingly, bro, Coach Hewitt, Coach Paul Hewitt didn't recruit me at Tech. Mm-hmm. He he didn't go that heavy. Nah. For Georgia players, Mm-mm. he just he really didn't. He got Javaris. Yeah, he heard that a he lot. got favors. Mufon. 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 Yeah. I mean, I, I guess Rice. that's. Right, okay, maybe, maybe I'm I mean, his whole his, his whole wrong. nine class. I mean, it was a, it was a good class. I right? don't. I just yeah. From from the old five to the old eight class. Yeah. So, I don't. And maybe it's because those none of those kids could really qualify to get into. Like Georgia maybe. Tech is another one that maybe. you got to qualify to get in. Right. So, um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's that's one one of those things with that. I I mean, you know, I. Yeah, I ain't really. talk, so if they would have talked to you, would, would they have been on the board? You think? 
Uh, nah. I don't think so. It was just too close. I think it was like UGA as well. And you wanted to get away and see some of the more yeah, different cultures. Yeah, I wanted too. to. Because, again, like, leaving Stone Mountain, having have grown up there, leaving there, and it was almost like a, a culture shock in that sense. So I became, like, addicted to it. It was like a, like, man, it's a world out here. You know what I'm saying? So many other experiences out here. And... It kind of fed, you know, that addiction for that. But I was yeah. just like, yeah, get to see, too close. No, no stereotype. You get to see things outside the stereotype. Yeah. And then you get to represent, we ain't the same stereotype that you think we are as well. Yeah. Going down there as a black man. Like, yeah. no, I'm educated. I'm well read. Mm -hmm. I'm just not a, a dumb jock. Like, I can articulate things the same way you articulate yeah. So yeah. Now, you so, so I said, you make the decision. You go to Miami. Um, I, I know I can remember one, like I said, we talking about dunks again. I think you already know the dunk that I'm talking about, man. The, the one in North Carolina. Yeah. Um, when you, when, when you, I, I, I want to say you tried, you imitated Kobe, but shit, long rest, long live Bean, but it looked better than Kobe. Because no, where no, you, no, cause no, where no, you man, took man. off hey, from, man, bro. No, no, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is no disrespect. I, hey, listen, I don't want y'all to kill me out there in the world, but just go look up the dunk, the Quan Jones dunk against North Carolina. Just go look at it. He, took, he takes off from the other side of the block, <laughs> reverses it, and dunks it. So, I remember that. That's the play that stuck out to me. And I'm like, yeah, he league after that. You don't got to do nothing else. He's <laughs> league after that. But I ended up reading that you you uh, you see some trouble there. Um, like, you get, did they suspend you for... <laughs> Not nothing, you know, it's not nothing of character or nothing like that. Nah. But um, something that you didn't really have nothing to do. Because I read the story and it's kind of like, you could, in your interview, you're kind of like, man, I didn't even know that some of this stuff was going on. Man, so funny story, though, with the, with the Carolina dump. Um, again, I, I look back at my life and I don't really have a lot of regrets. Mm -hmm. I, I would have did this, I would have did that, but... I should have, from the pro the perspective of Miami, I should have focused and chosen a school that focused more on development, as opposed to as opposed to produce now. You know what I'm saying? And choosing Miami, my experience was it was like, all right, you know, you're at the time I was the highest recruit Miami had ever got. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, here, produce. And they making noise in the ACC. They were starting to make noise in the ACC. Yeah, as well. you because the, Clinton had put them on the yeah, map a little bit. They, they were, uh, they had made Jimmy it to the be You yeah. beat Florida State. I think they had, did they win the ACC tournament like the, or they went far in the ACC tournament like the yeah, year before. Yeah, the like NCAA that. tournament. Yeah. 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 So, but that, that game was actually, uh, that was like a mental mind game type game. What I mean by that was, as a freshman, I'm not playing what I was promised. You know, oh yeah, you going but Brian Asbury was a senior ahead of me. And, you know, it was told to me, we're gonna focus on your development, whatever, whatever, whatever. Wasn't playing cool. I go and I, you know, I'm still I still got Stone Mountain in me. So I'm in practice wilding out. I'm killing, I'm talking crazy, you know. And so, Coach Hay brings me in his office. It's like, I think we had played Clemson before that. Got clapped. Bring me in his office. It's like, yeah, we got Carolina coming up. I'm going to start you. Mm. And it's one of those things where, you know what I mean? It's one of those things where yeah. they set you up. To fail. See if you're going to fail. To see if you're going to fail. And that's the game you're talking about. Um, and the way he done dump that ball like like he was trying to prove something. You seeing that pop? Why? Hey, so am I tripping, pop? Hey, yes sir. Pop, am I tripping a little bit? No, nah, you tell the truth, man. Am I tripping a little oh, bit? Man, I'm, man. I'm saying I'm not no disrespect to Kobe. Kobe hey. did it great. Yeah, but he, he but if he if there's there. somebody that's, that's imitating that dunk, he came around that did anything. That's for real. So you were set up to Smart. fail. So now they put you in there to really just to show you that you ain't what you think you are, pretty much. Yeah, to show to show you ain't what you think you are, but it's also, um, you know, you gotta look at it from the perspective of people 
and you you should definitely see it at a pro at a pro level. Um, people put you in certain uh, compromising positions to justify their actions. Yeah. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To say, oh, look, I told so now, you. So now you need to humble yourself. Mm-hmm. Right. You need to eat this humble pie. I got right. to prepare even though, you, even though this position that yeah. you put me in may not be the best suited or I really don't have a. I'm right. A, a right way to win. Like, you put me in a tough spot, so of course I'm not going to succeed. But it makes it look good because it makes you seem like you proved your point. Exactly, but he didn't like, prove. His but point. you didn't prove your point. You just you just made me look bad for no reason. But so I, now when I put myself in, now when I go out here and I really show you now who looks stupid. Now, but then because people saying now why you of, ain't playing this boy the whole then, time? But then the game of basketball, now they label you. Now you're inconsistent. No, yeah. I'm not inconsistent. And you, you got it's culture. You got to put your players in, in the best position mm-hmm. all the time. If you wanted to be, you're the coach. You know, you you, you know the system that they want to succeed in. So yeah. that game, you ball out. Mm-hmm. So what's the conversation with the coach after that? Uh, I mean, you know, it, it's 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 the same thing. It's you now. You the greatest thing since you know. Now we. Wanna, I believe in you now. I knew yeah, you had this. Yeah, in the I knew time. you. Had, and 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 it's like one of those things where something happened. It's like oh, a mistake happened. It's like oh yeah, I meant to do that. Or it's like oh man, you had that in you all along. You know, it was one of those type you know instances. But again. Looking back in my life, like I said, playing my part in it, mm-hmm. I always, you know, as a man, you take responsibility for your, your, uh, Shortcoming. your shortcomings, and I was, it was, it was a, it, we butted heads, but it was a more so, I had a, a me against the world type attitude, mm-hmm. but uh, to your point, to speak to what, uh, what happened with the NCAA. Um, the thing happened with the with the football team and oh, yeah. Nevin Shapiro mm-hmm. and uh, with the money. I remember that now. Yeah, with the with the money thing. Yeah, so dating back to Bush Davis and all that. Yeah. yeah. So again, now just imagine all athletics got to go to hell. So again, just imagine, wake up one morning, wake up. You got you got a. I had a nine thirty, waking up. Looking at my phone, I'm like, okay, I got a text message. My my pops and called me five times. I'm like, okay, but at the time, my Twitter was going crazy, and it's just people like, yeah, you know, Quan Jones, he's a piece of whatever. I'm just so I called my pops. My pops is like, where you at? I'm like, I just woke up. I roll over. He's like, go to Yahoo. Flip over laptop, Yahoo Sports. My name is like plastered, plastered everywhere. Mm. So again, I don't know what's going on. The coaches is calling me to the office, whatever. Long story short, you know this guy who was convicted of a, of a Ponzi scheme. Mm-hmm. I think he he finessed like nine hundred million, something crazy. Money. Hold on, wait. How much? By nine like million. Like nine hundred million, bro. Dog, he was getting folks money like all the fuck them early two thousands like Bush Davis. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, he was feeding the whole team, dog. Like that's what Miami went down for because Buddy was around the program from they was winning national championships and then and he was the man at Miami. So, like he's the man. He's the athletic director, the dean, the president. He's all that. So you know he he's on record saying. As it pertains to me, he's like, yo, I gave such and such. These are all allegations, by the way. Yeah. Allegedly. Right, allegedly. allegedly. He's like, yo, I gave such and such this for this kid, Daquan Jones. I never met him. I never met his parents. I never met him. So it's synonymous with somebody on the streets giving you a gold necklace, like, oh, this for Daquan, and you keep it. Or you, you know what I'm saying, whatever. And they kicked the police kick your door in is like where's the jewelry? Where is it? Yeah, yeah. So it was one of those instances and so okay. okay. Man, I went through months of just like the NCA investigating, they called me in, you know, I'm sitting at a round table like this with 
At 20 Five, years old. 20, 20 years old. 20 years old. Oh, and this is when Twitter and stuff is new. So now you got people that are talking crazy on your Twitter. That, that was once your fans. Shit, you can't even walk around the you, campus. You can't, you can't walk, walk around, around the campus. City, people talking about your character. You know what I'm saying? All types of really judging you. You know what I'm saying? Far things that I'll mark, might touch you. To the point where it's like it might affect you basketball wise. It might feel like, man, you know what? Because you, really you went it. through it too. All right? Is yeah. this really worth it? Like, yeah. I want to be bad. I want to be a famous basketball player. I want to be in the league. But it's all this that come with it, especially when something that I ain't got nothing to do with. Like, especially in your case, is, it, is this all just worth it? Man, that it, 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 it's exactly what you're saying. And I remember, man, I remember nights where I would just get in my car and just drive around, bro, and. Just listen to music, and it's a it's a vulnerability you you feel when you walking around campus, and your professors is looking at you a certain Crazy. way, or mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. It's like, yeah, it's like you the all you the, eyes on you, Everyone. all eyes you on you. Villain. You like the pariah. I mean, mm-hmm. you the villain. Yeah, you the villain. People like the villain. Yeah. And like you know that you know that energy. You yeah. walk by like I see you. I, I'm yeah, like I I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I see you tapping somebody and be like, and they like, I know that whole energy. Yeah, bro. So how that so I mean, mental because me and you already talked about just the brain. Mm-hmm. So what it, what it, what are your thoughts at this time? Like what are you what are you what are you thinking? Basketball, school wise, or just life wise? Like what are you? What's your mental health like? My mental health. It was, it was. I was going through it, mm-hmm. but I can say like the importance of having my dad, mm-hmm. my father, you know, in my life, and that's a that's a another gem, though. No. Boom. Yeah. Um, Father, fathers matter, man. Man, Father's man. Day this Sunday too, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah, fathers matter, <laughs> man. Um, but you know, just having that instilled in me, and it made me. This was like my defining moment. I looked at it like this moment or this stretch of your life is going to dictate the trajectory of the rest of your life. Because at the time, 20 years old, this is the hard. I mean, I didn't lost, you know, uh, loved ones and everything else. But this is your defining moment. And in retrospect, like looking back, it make it made me now empathetic for those players that never make it. It made me empathetic because I see how fragile the mind can be mm-hmm. when you're going through adversity because, you know what I'm saying, a lot of people in those instances, they think self-destruction is the only way. Mm-hmm. And, you so know. So it you out of your misery, out of your, yeah, out of your, yeah I guess you, your uncomfort. Yeah, because you, you try to lean because you, you're trying to run from that, right? So mm-hmm. I can see, like I'm telling people. I understand suicide. I understand substance abuse. I understand it. Not saying I would pick it. But you but understand. Yeah, because when you're battling in your own mind. And you try to find anything to Because you can't see it. a way out. Because mm-hmm. you're trying to visually see this way out. And, you know, you want to believe it's going to get better. But when you're in that dark tunnel, and people always say it's light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, but it's dark as hell. I can't even see my hand in front of my face, let alone a light at the end of the tunnel. Mm-hmm. And so you just say, well... I think Bang said it best. Like you embrace the darkness. Mm-hmm. It ain't mm-hmm. a winning mindset, but you just trying to. You ain't trying to win. You just trying to cope at this point in time because you you start to accept the darkness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it break most people. Mm-hmm. It break most people. That's why most people um, don't make it. They get broke in the darkness. Yeah, but um, you left your sophomore year. My sophomore year. Miami. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. The what's crazy is, it's a funny story. My junior year, uh, I go into Frank Haven's office, mm-hmm. and I'm like, "Yeah, bro, like I'm I'm leaving. I'm, I want to. I got to transfer. I got to get out of here." And he tells me he's like, "We're leaving to go to the NCAA tournament, and uh, when I come back, like I'll give you a release." Goes to the NCAA tournament. Two days later, he takes the Missouri job. Mm. And so you know it, it's they looking out for themselves, right? Uh, and again, what's like what's we'll spoon tells? No, ain't no this loyalty episode. in this thing, man. Take care of yourself. It ain't yeah. no loyalty. Yeah, and we might so have to put we might have to add his part into that little if we can add his skit 
part yeah, into it. Like, what, what, what school say? They know loyalty is going to look for yourself. You see if we can do that, maybe. I, I'll th- talk to the producers. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, But yeah, man, so, you know, Coach. Two days later, after the meeting? Two or three. So that means he's already been in negotiation. His lawyer's already talking Already been in negotiation. Yeah. That's why he was so calm with him telling you like that, probably. Huh. I ain't going to be here. Well, I ain't going to be here do. anyway. Yeah. So he leaves, goes to Missouri. He's now, what's that, well, Big 12 at the time. Yeah, are they putting pressure on him based on these allegations too? With the, this, with the, this is before the allegations came out. This gotcha. happened my senior year. Gotcha, okay. This the, uh, this happened, uh, yeah, yeah, this this was this was a couple months prior to. To the allegation drop. Allegations. So your coach so, leave then. So he kind of knew the allegations was coming. Coming too, so he knew that too. He had to. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not, again, exactly. I'm not it's saying, yeah, it's I'm not legend, saying, man, legend, yeah. but yeah. I mean, let me go ahead and get out of here. I'm going to go from Miami to Missouri. Because, I mean, I'm just saying, outside looking in, when you read the reports, like I said, I'm a U fan. They was already, they was already yeah, investigating and so building this for me. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah, but I, so he leaves, so he go to Missouri. Mm-hmm. You, so you don't transfer, obviously. Nah, so Coach Larry Nega, mm-hmm. he takes the job, and... You know, I uh, I called around like, yeah, like what kind of coaches, Coach Larry Nega, whatever, and everybody had number of positive things to say about him. Um, he took that George Mason team, you know, made a winning culture there. Um, he just had a good rapport with players, and I felt like after the three years of what I went through, this is a fresh start. Um, so the allegations drop. They come to me. And it's like, hey man, we think you should red shirt. I'm like, red shirt. Red shirt. I didn't I didn't oh, been man. here for three years, whatever. My team. And keep in mind, a month like while all of this is going on, I'm still on the draft board. Mm-hmm. I'm still late first. I think it was like twenty eight. I'm still late first, early second. Like, whatever. Now, mind you, that next year, that team, that's the team that went to the Sweet Sixteen. Whatever, one of those things where you always look back what could have been, whatever, cool. I'm like, nah, I'm not, I'm not red shirt. So now the NCAA investigate the the interviews and the investigation picks up now. Now they calling me in like, yeah, your dad got a a a, a, a this in 2001. How he pay for that? I'm like, my dad's been working since he was 16 years old. Hell, I don't know in 2001. I was like 10. That goes to show you. But again, they... Bro, you was 10. You weren't even a basketball player. This man, you ain't on this man radar in 2001. Bro, when, when when the NCAA and the FBI and them, when they investigate, they investigate. They investigate. Bro, you, that's how I told you. When you're an NBA prospect or NFL prospect, yeah, they, that private investigator and all that stuff that you don't really know about, man, they, they own bro, bro, I'm saying, so, bro, You probably ain't even like basketball. You probably playing baseball in 2001. Bro, I, again, they was bringing up stuff like... I, it was just stuff. One, it was just stuff. They was like, yeah, you know, we see uh, you got a car. Like, how did you, you know, how did you, how did you afford, afford this car? Again, under different circumstances, if my family name was different, I don't think these questions would be asked to me. Right. Mm-hmm. But. I'm type, yeah. Whatever. So, the school, so the NCAA concludes the investigation, but they say we can't suspend them, but if we find anything, y'all have to forfeit games, whatever. Cool. So the school tells me you sitting for the year. So NCAA clearly the school protected themselves. Protect themselves. Just exactly. in case if it's something that was missed. Because they don't know about who they've been dealing with. Yeah. So the school, other people within them. Yeah. So I say, okay, cool. Now again, mentally, I'd have been whatever. I don't. I've embraced the villain role fully at this point. So I'm like, nah. Okay, cool. If if I'm gonna be punished for not doing anything wrong, then somebody gonna have to pay for it. So I hired an attorney, my attorney Jason Sessions. He said, look, this kid, he's still on the he's still on the draft board. If we Factor in uh, prior earnings to other second round, first round picks. Woo, woo, woo. We'll settle for this, and you have to 
release him to transfer to any school he, he wants to and not have to sit out. So he basically sued the university. So the next day they was like, nah, he can play. Oh, so, man. So, <laughs> so, I got you on that one. So, you, awesome. you know what I'm saying? It, it, fight it, for yours? You fight, fight. fight. We got to fight yeah. for yours. You got to fight. You got to fight for yours and not not be accepting of what's given to you, your circumstances. It's always a way out. It's always a, a, an, an option. And it's what we talk about. In most cases, you got to think your way out of things. It ain't really about being a victim like that's the my whole life my whole career i never accepted a victim role i just changed my circumstances mm. that's all it was mm-hmm. you know what i mean and to your point i went to training camp with the hawks in 2016 15 16, 15, 16. i remember i remember i mean i just had to picture up when you was you was playing in the, in the black and white with the uh where they had the little triangle jerseys on. Yeah. I, remember, I remember i remember i was like oh shit. So, it was so. Why you whispering? Because I'm, I'm not. I'm thinking about it, it's like I why? Got a whole mic, no, why no, you I'm whispering? just saying. No, it was, like, I'm, it was baffling to me. Like, cause he. Yeah. <laughs> nah, bro. I made that that team. I actually, they invited me in for um. They invited me in for open gym. Mm-hmm. I went for a week. It was like. I come back another week. I came back for the other week. They came to me. They was like, hey, you, you want to come to training camp with us? I was at the crib. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Um, but I think I didn't make that team because they had drafted a guy in my position and they had already paid him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you know how that goes. But to your point, this is 2016. Mm-hmm. Um. I forgot who the assistant GM was. Malik Malik Rose, was the mm-hmm. assistant GM. He pulled me in his office, and he still asked me about that, about the NCAA thing. That guy's gonna change anything. Nah, not like it was gonna change anything, but the fact that he wanted to see if he was gonna lie or not, or or not, not even that. He was, like. he was he was he was it was a character assessment. Mm-hmm. He knew what kind of character I was, mm-hmm. but it was the fact that. These allegations still followed me years later after I've been cleared after whatever. That was Jones. That was Daquan Jones who got up there high. What a basket. Boy, look at this lob. Well, good steal on the fast break. Nice lob over the top. Oh, DJ. Right in stride. Getting up there. Yes. And two. So we uh, speed it up a little bit. Um, I was reading an article about you know what I'm saying you get uh, right before you're getting ready to go to the to the draft and get drafted. And then, uh, they write an article basically t- talking about how um, they feel like you struggle, and especially with Hurricanes fans. Saying Hurricanes fans were disappointed because, like you said, that you were supposed to be this prize recruit. Mm-hmm. But what do you expect? Obviously, like, everything you just detailed. Like I've been going through a lot, like mm-hmm. recruiting violations. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, coaches, coaches changes and stuff like that. So there's a lot of things that went against me. You ain't like we just talked about. You ain't let that deter you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You've always just find a way to change your circumstances. So you know, I I kind of going through my own thing. I kind of lost track because I'm going through my own thing. The next thing I know, you you pop up and you're in the league. Mm-hmm. You uh you had your stint with uh as you can see with Orlando. Mm-hmm. You had a stint with uh with Indiana. Mm-hmm. Um. Can you just talk about you know briefly about like what how how that stint went or you know what I'm saying how did you even get into that. In those positions the same thing bro Every, my whole career is just a culmination of one uh opportunity and preparation meeting at the right time um i put the work in behind the scenes man and it's just like even with orlando they had a roster at 15. Mm-hmm. they had a 15-man roster they invited the uh training camp roster was at 2021. 20, you know what I'm saying? They ended up paying Quentin Richardson and some other guys close to $5 million buyouts just to keep me as a young guy. Mm. So that that was just a testament. Yeah, that was just a testament of me coming in and it wasn't no, you know, it wasn't no half-stepping. You know, I, it, it was just a cult. And I felt like that year and that opportunity was like 
a culmination of my whole life. That opportunity, that training camp, and I poured my soul, like my everything, all my emotions into it, and that's what came about, man. That's now you're on the NBA years. roster, you made it, you're mm -hmm. here. Um, you know, obviously some things just didn't go as the way that you wanted to. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you had to make a you know, you made a career. You've been back and forth into the D League and stuff like mm -hmm. that, putting up numbers. Man Ants are running out. Oh! Jaquan Jones! No! Man Ants 109, the Bulls 98. Body and people like you always do, but now you're making you're making your living overseas and stuff like that. Right. Um, so that's where you're at right now. That's 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 what that's where, where you playing at right now. Uh, I just finished in Japan and I just signed a two year extension. With you my won team a championship in Japan, in Japan too. Mm -hmm. You won a championship this year. Yeah. Congratulations! Man, they, got, they got your picture all over Japan and stuff, man. <laughs> I'm just Congrats saying, when the that. pebbles slip down in Japan, you know what I'm saying. I just need that same Lord. I'm like, hey man, I'm with the Jones crew, dog. Yeah, yeah man. Double time. So yeah, man, so so as we keep kind of get ready to wrap this up, man, like I said, we continuing to play. Is there anything else that you have going on um, outside of basketball, um, like any clothing lines, brands? Um, or, um, I know you're a family man. You got you got kids, yeah. <laughs> you got a wife, stuff like that. Um, nah, man. I mean, I, I have a foundation where I work with the youth. Um, Jed Jones Foundation. We've gone back uh, to uh, Madlock Park. We yeah, clean, like, we cleaned yeah, up yeah. Madlock Park uh, in neighboring communities just to kind of, you know, give uh, the kids a, a, a chance, a, a chance, and and kind of uh, balance the scales, man. We've mm -hmm. done back to school drives, a uh, school supply drive. We raised over two, three thousand pounds in school supplies. We work with Books for Africa. Um, just you know, I, I'm real passionate about working with the youth and, and and being involved in the community. And my wife, she just uh, wrote a kids book, the Kinsugi Kid, and uh, you know she's passionate about she's passionate about uh, children and and being an author as well. But that's about it, man. That's that's dope, bro. That's dope. I think that's even more dope that, like you said, is you. You know, got your own thing going, man, that you uh supporting your lady, man. So especially with her writing children's books, that's big. I definitely would like to look into that and, and you know, she, she continues to do more series, definitely look into it. For I got sure. I got one of my best friends who who, who does children's books out of uh, Huntsville, Alabama, Shaki, shout out to you, my brother. And uh definitely wanna thank you for coming on the show, man, sure. and definitely thank you for bringing me this book, man. I'm definitely gonna take a uh, take a look into it, man. Um I learned a little bit uh, behind the scenes about the Quan man. He's an avid reader, uh, much much like my uh, my co-host. So um, you know, there's a lot of layers to this guy, man. So hey, man, I just definitely want to appreciate shout you bringing in. Definitely appreciate the gifts. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. the appreciate the things it, that you man. brought in, man. Thank y'all show, man. Me, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, I want to shout you out for we could it, dog. But just as a, as a, as a black man, as a black father. You know, as a black husband, man, and you just really just keeping that bar raised for black men because all the stuff you've been through, they like you say, they try to paint us one way. Yeah. And even when they tried to paint you that way, you let them know that it was the other way. Nah, and right. uh, you would, everybody you went through, you fought it, man. So I just want to give you a test in that because I've seen My a brother. lot of people not make it for those same reasons. And they use it as an excuse. And you say, no, nah, I'm about to excel on it. Yeah. To where you've been able to you know, take care of your family, come back and get it. Because that's what me and Cam talk about. Nobody ever comes back. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, not saying nobody, but a lot don't come back. And you coming back and you still a staple in the community, especially on the east side, man. You ain't hiding. You ain't in your nah. big mansion. Nah. You ain't none of that. You still riding up and say, I ain't got no security, no nothing. I'm pulling up and taking care of the kids. Yeah, no, Cam, no, oh. I pull up on Williams and, 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 eat it, and eat it in the parking lot. Well, you know, Cam got security, dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Cam got security, man. Look, I got to book an appointment to talk to Cam, dog. I like, believe. for real, I have to talk to his management just to sit down and talk to Cam about pregame, <laughs> dog. So I appreciate you. Listen. When you come back from the league, when you come back from the league, man, we're going to bring, I'm going to take Cam off. I'm talking to people now. We're doing the cut to get Cam off 94 feet, man, because he ain't got Hollywood on us, man. Oh, so, wait a minute. So, I started so. this barbecue. <laughs> is, is this the motherfucking face I get? <laughs> hey, go. man. That's it for 94 feet podcast. Man. I'm your host, Cam Taylor, man. Hey, man. It's getting the pebble, man. Yeah, man. I'd like to thank, man, Daquan Jones for coming on again, man. Oh, yeah, Appreciate man. you, my boy. Oh, my God. That's it, man. I appreciate you.